The Xbox Connect. Nay, Natal. In many ways, it's like the rare fainting goat of the video game world. A cute idea in of itself that many people are intrigued by, but don't really understand. Oh, and it's a frequent target of trolls. Strain simile notwithstanding, this is possibly the biggest revolution in gaming since, well, the Wii. So, naturally people want to know two things. Does it work? And how does it work? Well, I can help you with at least one of those. So, let's find out the way that Kinect works. Dropping a staple of every major video game console since the Magnavox Odyssey, Kinect allows people to play games, and even navigate their Xbox dashboards, through a combination of controller-free gestures and voice commands. This is all accomplished through a single, though somewhat girthy, bar apparatus that sits just below, or above, the television screen. The first points of interest on Kinect are the two video recording devices that stand out front and center. One of these is essentially a common, visible light color webcam, similar to the kind you'll find in many modern laptops, smartphones, or public bathrooms. The other device is an infrared camera, something I'll get to in a second. First, though I went over it in greater detail in my PlayStation Move video, I'd like to give you a quick reminder on how these complementary metal oxide semiconductor, or CMOS, cameras work. I'll need 30 seconds on the clock, and go! Light bounces off what the camera is looking at and forms a two-dimensional image. Each bounced light wave hits a pixel on the camera, knocking electrons out of their comfy orbitals and forming free charges. These pass through transistors that convert each charge into a voltage, which is then stored in a frame grabber. Each game holds voltage values for each pixel, which then interact with software that can now read whatever flailing about it was you were doing to interact with the game in the first place. <sighs> uh, that was perhaps a bit too short. To make this an attractive science show to the modern public, I'm going to have to add something else. Explosion! That ought to do it. So, with that primer out of the way, let's look at the purpose of these cameras. The standard visible light camera, or RGB camera, standing for red, green, blue, records you and your environment. Useful for replicating your image in various and sundry games where doodahs fall from the ceiling and attack you or whatever. Necessary, but not too exciting. The infrared camera is the basis of Kinect's motion control and specifically records images in the infrared part of the light spectrum in order to interact with software. Perhaps this requires a little more exposition. If you weren't aware, or just slept through your high school physics class, electromagnetic, or EM, radiation is a form of energy that travels in a wave. Well, technically it carries energy, but let's press on. Things like radio waves, microwaves, ultraviolet light, and x-rays are just different forms of EM radiation. The difference between these is dependent on certain characteristics of the wave, namely its wavelength and frequency, two terms that are pretty self-explanatory. Frequency is the number of wave cycles per unit time, and wavelength is, well, the length of one full section of wave. The important thing to remember here is that for EM waves, these values are inversely proportional, meaning that if one increases, the other decreases, and vice versa. There's no way around it. Radio waves have a low frequency and long wavelength, but X-rays have a high frequency and short wavelength. The electromagnetic spectrum is the range of all possible forms of EM radiation. You'll find it all here, and right around the middle is visible light, with each color we can see as a small subsection of that part of the spectrum. For example, relative to each other, red light has a long wavelength, and violet light has a short wavelength. And just below the frequency of visible red light, somewhere around one micrometer, you'll find infrared, or IR, light which is invisible to the human eye. Kinect's IR camera can detect this part of the spectrum just fine, thank you, and works in conjunction with an IR emitter, that um, circular window off to the side by its lonesome there, which bathes the room in infrared light. This has the effect of brightly illuminating the room with invisible light, so the IR camera can pick up every movement, even in the dark, while not having to shine an annoyingly bright visible light in your face. Oh, and for those of you worried about your Kinect filling the room with harmful radiation, don't. Infrared is a safe form of radiation. You see, the shorter the wavelength of light, the more energy it carries. And when a high energy wave, like an x-ray, hits the cells in your body, well, 
it can muck things up pretty badly, to say the least. And that's why you're supposed to limit your exposure to even moderately high energy waves, such as ultraviolet, which has a wavelength just short of visible light. However, infrared light carries less energy than visible light due to its longer wavelength, so game on. As you may have noticed during the process of living, objects closer to a light source appear brighter. The same is true for the Kinex IR emitter and camera. As you can see with my sample IR camera and specialty light bulb, I appear well lit, while the background is more of a monotone color, outside of acceptable focus, or depth of field. With this constant and dependable infrared source, the brightness of an object can help indicate the distance between it and the camera, giving the camera a three-dimensional perspective of sorts. Even with the lights out, my infrared bulb keeps me well lit enough for the IR camera to see. Once again, the camera can see my movements without shining bright visible light in my face. And this is about it for the main hardware. But now is where we get to the true source of Kinex Ingenuity, the software. As you might expect from a Microsoft product, software is key. Yes, I hear you snickering in the back, Apple and Linux fanboys. Just stick with me for the sake of argument, okay? Though the hardware was adapted from a technology already created by a company called PrimeSense, Microsoft developed the software that allows Kinect to correspond human movements to games without a controller. Let's walk through the software's thought process, so to speak, to see how it does this. First, the software needs to make sense of the images captured by the camera. Through a process called machine learning, it's been programmed to analyze images, recognize the human form, and track 48 essential points in a 3D space. This was done by collecting millions of images of people in different poses, with tags manually appended by programmers that label all the important body parts so that the software knows what it's looking at. All this data was compiled by a Microsoft computer farm, which creates probabilities and statistics about how humans move and what they look like. This information, which is fed into the program, is essentially how Kinect interprets what people look like and who the players are, and keeps your wandering cat from interfering with your game. Well, no more than usual. This interpretation process is rather advanced. It begins by taking your infrared picture and judging the distance to each point in the image. Then Kinect guesses on what it's seeing, with varying degrees of assurance, applying body parts and a wireframe, those 48 tracking points, based on the statistics from its machine learning. Using probability, it assigns the most likely skeletal structure of the person and creates a simple avatar that can be used by games and applications. This is all done within a few thousandths of a second, meaning that it does this for every image and easily keeps up with the refresh rate of the IR camera, 30 frames per second. It's this motion of the 3D avatar that's analyzed to determine the gestures you use to control the game. Kinect also has a few nifty features to complete your new controller-free existence. For example, it can use your most recent frames of previous movement to take an educated guess as to your current state, even if, say, your arm is obstructed by your body for a short period of time. Also, Kinect has the ability to recognize you and automatically pull up your profile based on your skeletal structure and some basic face recognition software. Hell, Kinect even has a motorized base so that it can adjust its view on the fly to accommodate rooms of all sizes and the position of each gesticulating player. Unfortunately, fingers don't appear to be a part of Kinect's skeletal structure, but hey, you gotta leave something for the Xbox 720. Rounding out Kinect's tech is the microphone array, which allows players to use voice commands along with motions, adding another level to application control. This is accomplished with four separate downward-facing mics that are able to pick up reasonably audible commands from just about anywhere in the room. In fact, it's the placement of these mics that ultimately determine the length of Kinect's sensor bar. The innovative bit here is how, through an onboard processing unit and beam-forming software, the mics can block out ambient white noise and clearly understand individual voices. A big part of how Kinect can accomplish this is by using data from the IR camera to determine where players are in the room, and focus in on sounds only from those people. Xbox, pause. Ignoring noise from those who are not interacting with the game, but instead feel the need to blab on about irrelevant things like work, relationships, and your upcoming divorce. 
But picking out your voice is only half the story. The computer can recognize your command, through whatever accent you may have, by checking it versus an acoustic model that was built on hours of samples taken from regional dialects all over the world. So rejoice, Iowa. Your bland, plain, white bread newscaster accent hasn't been forgotten. You really have to give Microsoft credit for all the innovative technology that they've been able to cram into one small package. And regardless of its fate, you can expect Kinect to maintain the same level of quality as any other Microsoft product. Um, insert your own joke there. I beg 